This video kicks off our talk on the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system. And the cardiovascular system is a system in our body that pumps blood around. And it is made up of two parts. It's made up of the heart, which is the actual pump. And then it's made up of blood vessels, which is what carries the blood around our body. Vessels. Why do you think they call it the cardio? vascular system. So it's made out of the heart, and that's the cardio part, and then the vessels, that's the vascular part. Let's talk about the heart first. Your heart is a four chamber pump. It has two atria, sorry, right, atria, and two ventricles, all right, ventricles. And your atria's job is to take blood from outside of the heart, from outside of the heart. And it'll fill with blood and it'll start to trickle down to your ventricles. So our atria fill with blood from outside. And it'll trickle down to your ventricles and your ventricles job is to pump that blood back out. So right, pump back out. Ventricles pump blood back out. So why do you have two atria and two ventricles in? because we separate it into your right heart and your left heart. Your right heart pumps blood to your lungs. Let's draw it out. Here's your right atria, your right ventricle, and it'll collect blood, and that'll trickle down to your ventricle. And we say your ventricle's job is to pump out blood, it'll pump it out into your lungs to get oxygen. And once it gets oxygen, It'll return that blood to your left heart. Will we return it to your atria or your ventricles? Well, it's your atria that takes blood from outside sources, right? So we'll return blood to your atria, your left atria, and that will trickle blood to your left ventricles. And we say your ventricles' job is to pump blood out. So it'll pump blood out into your body via a large vessel called the aorta. Into your body. So we get this oxygenated blood, take up all the oxygen, take up all the nutrients, and then we return it back. Return it where? To your atria or to your ventricles? It'd be your atria. That's what takes out side blood, right? And the whole cycle will start again. That is how we're gonna draw most of our cardiovascular system, okay? And we're gonna draw so many times you're gonna know it cold. That's how our cycle goes. Now what's to stop it from going the other way? We don't want it to go the other way. The thing that stops it from going the other way is valves. You have valves to stop it from going the other way. Let's just look at the right heart for now. Normally, blood will trickle down to your ventricle. All right? We don't want it to go back up. So a valve that stops it is called the tricuspid valve. Tricuspid valve. And they call it the tricuspid valve because it has three little leaflets. Tricuspid, okay? The way I always remember it, I always call it the right cuspid valve. Right cuspid valve. I accidentally said that on the wards once. I, I said a right cuspid valve and I was mortified. So know it to, to kind of help you remember, but make sure you don't say it the, in the actual wards, in actual practice, okay? So that's your right cuspid valve. Your tricuspid valve, oh my goodness. That's your tricuspid valve. The blood will trickle down to your ventricles. We say your ventricles job is to pump blood out. It'll pump it to the lungs to your pulmonary circulation. The valve that stops your pulmonary circulation from going backwards is gonna be called your pulmonary valve. Pulmonary valve. It will get oxygenated in the lungs and then return to the left atrium and blood will trickle down to your ventricle. To stop it from going backwards, you have the bicuspid valve. They call it bicuspid because it has two leaflets. A more common name is actually the mitral valve. Mitral valve, so know them both. And eventually hit your left ventricle, and your left ventricle's job is to pump it out, pump all that oxygenated blood out to your body via your aorta. What stopping the blood from going back from your aorta? Be none other than the aortic valve. Makes perfect sense. And that is our cycle, and again, that's a lot of information, but we're gonna draw it so many times that you're gonna know it cold. You're gonna know the call, I guarantee it. Uh, some semantics that they have tested before. Your heart isn't actually situated left and right. 
is not situated left and right. It's actually situated kind of front and back, front and back. So your right heart, your right heart is actually situated in front and actually covers a lot of your front surface. So if someone stabs you in the front, first off, that sucks. But if someone stabs you in the front, they usually hit your right ventricle. Usually hit your right ventricle because it's kind of covering your front. And your left side is way in the back, way in the back. I don't know if you can see it. This looks kind of weird. But your left side is going to be way in the back. And that's important because if they want to see your left atria, they'll put a scope down your throat and then they can view it because it's the furthest back. It's the most posterior. So I'll write that down. All right. Left atria, most posterior. Right ventricle, most anterior. All right, so you can see the left atria with things like a transesophageal echo. Yeah. They put a scope down your esophagus and they can see your left atria because it's the most, the furthest back. And that is all I want to talk about for the heart. Talk about your vessels. Talk about your vessels. We said that you pump out blood via your aorta and it'll go to your body. And from your aorta, you're gonna have little branches that carry that blood all the way from the tips of your fingers to the tips of your toes. So you're gonna have little branches. So right, aorta and its branches. These we call arteries. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Think A for arteries, A for away. It has nothing to do with oxygenation. It has nothing to do with ox oxygenation. Here is carrying oxygenated blood. But here, we pump blood away from the heart to the lungs via what we call the pulmonary artery. Yeah. Away from the heart. So it has to be called an artery. Yeah. This is deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood. So it has nothing to do with oxygen. As long as it carries something away from the heart, we call it an artery. We call it an artery. And arteries need to be very, very tough. They need to be very, very thick because they're dealing with a ton of pressure. They're dealing with the heart, the ventricles pumping blood through it. So arteries are very thick. In fact, they have three layers. They have three layers. The inside layer, I'll denote as one. It's called the tunica intima, inside layer. The second layer, the middle layer, other than those two, is called the tunica media, meaning middle. And this is where a lot of the muscle is. A lot of the muscle is. And it needs to have that thick amount of muscle because it's taking a lot of pressure. Right? It's taking a lot of pressure. It has to, it has to have, that, have that thick muscle. And the last layer, the most external layer, it's called the tunica externa. The tunica externa. Sometimes called the tunica adventitia. Okay. Your media and your externa have a lot of elastin, the protein elastin. That way they can stretch to that pressure. Right? That, that way they can stretch to that pressure and kind of rebound. Some important kind of terminology you should know. The really large arteries like your aorta, like your pulmonary arteries, the really, want, the really large arteries that are close to your heart have a lot of elastin because they need that stretch. And they're facing a lot of pressure, they need that stretch. Sometimes they're called elastic arteries because of that. Don't get thrown off by the terminology. That's why they call it elastic arteries. Right. So you go from your aorta and you'll start to have little branches. And those branches will become smaller and smaller. Will become smaller and smaller. You'll go from arteries to now arterioles. So all right, smaller. And when you jump from that large aorta, that large lumen, into a small, small arteriole, your blood's gonna face a lot of resistance. In your arterioles is where you have the highest amount of resistance. All right. Highest amount of resistance. 
And it also has a high amount of pressure. How does it get around that pressure? How, how do we say it gets around that pressure? It has a lot of elastin and also has a high, lot of this muscle, the media. So it has a thick tunica media. That way it can deal with that pressure, all right? Because it has such a thick tunic media, because it has so much muscles, it's very important for us in terms of vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Yeah, it can help control our pressure by vasodilating, vasoconstriction. It can help control our perfusion uh, by vasodilating, vasoconstriction. It can, can also control our thermal regulation, vasodilating, vasoconstricting. All thanks to the large amount of muscle. So I would say vasodilates, vasoconstricts. So these are your small arterioles and it'll start to branch and branch and branch into the smallest, the smallest vessel. And that is called your capillary. All right, smallest. Your capillaries are so small that they're only one layer thick. They do not have tunica media. They do not have tunica externa. They only have your tunica Intima. Only have your tunica intima. Intima. Or your endothelium. Not only do they ha only have the intima, but the intima has holes in it. It is fenestrated. Fenestrated. Why on earth do you have a fenestrated endothelium? Because it is in your capillaries where ions can leave. It is in your capillaries where oxygen from your red blood cells can exchange. It is in your capillaries where exchange happens. This is how we get our oxygen. So our exchange, this is where it happens. So we get our oxygen, we're nice and happy. Now we have to carry this deoxygenated blood back. All right, so just kind of start the cycle all over again. So your capillaries connect to vessels that carry oxygen back called your venules. And your venules are small but they will eventually connect to a larger thing, kind of like here, you go from large to small, well here we'll go from small back to large. It'll go into your larger vessels called your veins. So your veins and your venules, plus venules, carry blood back to heart. Back to heart. Again, has nothing to do with oxygenation. But here, <clears throat> we're carrying oxygenated blood back to the left atrium, right? Because we're carrying blood back to the heart, this is called your pulmonary vein. This is oxygenated. Here's a vein that's deoxygenated. So veins have nothing to do with oxygenation, okay? They're just things that carry back blood back to your heart. Where do they go? Go in your right atrium. And that blood will trickle back and the cycle will start all over again. Your veins are so far removed from your aorta that it doesn't have to face that high pressure. It doesn't have to face that high pressure. And so because it doesn't have to face that high pressure, it doesn't have really thick tunica media. It doesn't really have to have that really thick muscle. And that's exactly what you see. You see a thin tunica media. <clears throat> and that's good. It's not too stiff. Yeah, it can kind of expand and carry more blood. Sometimes, however, it can expand too much and blood doesn't go back up the way it should. Sometimes blood can pull. Sometimes blood can even fall backwards or get stuck there. How do we make sure blood goes the direction it should go? We already talked about one way. We talked about valves and that's exactly what your veins have. Your veins have one-way valves. One-way valves. That pushes blood up and stops it from coming back. Pushes blood up, stops it from coming back. So that's a general rundown on your blood vessels. Our last topic of the day, we said that your heart, oh my God, that's terrible. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with this, whatever, we'll do it live. This is your heart, it has an aorta and it pumps out oxygenated blood. Pumps out oxygenated blood that goes to your body. That's great, fine and dandy. The problem is your heart is working so hard it says, hey, I need a little bit of oxygen too. I need a little bit of oxygen too. I can't let it all go to my body. I need some too. So your aorta says, don't worry, I got you. It has these little dilations called aortic sinuses. 
And from your aortic sinuses, low blood vessels will go back to the heart. Call your coronary arteries, coronary arteries. So it says, hey, I didn't forget about you. Here is some oxygen back. And you have a right coronary artery that supplies your right heart, right heart. You have a left coronary artery, you guessed it, supplies your left heart. Hopefully no problems there. Now let's just talk about your left coronary artery to start with. You have a branch that descends down the front of your heart, your anterior portion of your heart. We call this your left anterior descending artery. And supplies most of your left heart and your left ventricle. And then you have a little branch that kind of wraps around the back wraps around the back called the left circumflex and that help you supply the lateral part and your posterior part the back part so we get it covered on all sides we get it covered in the front we get co we get it covered on the side and the back so posterior great let's talk about your right coronary artery you have branches that supply the front good you also have a branch that wraps around the back see a trend there so all right i'll just write front and back those are not the actual terms, don't write that down, but uh, I just want to illustrate the point that you have coronary arteries that supply the front and of course you're going to have to supply the back. So both of these arteries wrap around the back. Why is that so important? Because on the back, pretend this is your posterior view and this is the back view, you'll have your two coronary arteries wrapping around. We'll continue to say this is the right, this is the left. And there'll be a main artery that descends down the back. We call this your posterior descending. What a fitting name. If your posterior descending is made from your right coronary artery, we call this right dominant. Right dominant. If instead the posterior descending is from your left circumflex, we call this left dominant. Sometimes they're from both. We call this co-dominant. I've actually had questions on that before. I don't know why it's important, but if it helps you get points on your step, that's fine with me. So this does it for our introductory video to heart anatomy, cardiovascular anatomy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.